بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Sheikh Al Samir bin Tamir, رحمه الله, was asked about the people who are Mukimun, who are residents or established in the Thugur. Anybody know what the Thugur are? It's a plural noun, but what the Thugur refer to? Any guesses? What's that? Uh, for security or for sure. And, and more specifically, it refers to the lands that border with the lands of non Muslims. This is the frontier lands, so to speak. So he, he was asked about a people who settled on the lands bordering non Muslim lands and about their attacking Armenians and others, gaining wealth from the spoils <coughs> and spending it on alcohol and fornication. Are they martyrs when killed? This is the question. Uh, I think it's an important question because, you know, <clears throat> what uh, what it seems to be the trend, especially as Muslims living in non-Muslim lands, is that we never hear any good information about Mujahideen or about Muslim fighters who are uh, resisting the invasion or occupation of non-Muslims anywhere in the world. Um, it seems to be that there's a lot of criticism and condemnation of Muslims who fight uh, uh, in order to establish Islam, um, or at least we hope it's to establish Islam, and we can't really know from our perspective here, but there seems to be a lot of condemnation, uh, and we're never told who exactly uh, the Mujahideen are, and, and who are the ones who are fighting upon the truth, even though the Hadith tell us that there will remain a group fighting upon the truth until the hour is established. So. <coughs> If anybody's going to be capable of telling us who those people are, it should be the ulama. Uh, however, we have a situation where this is not a topic that is uh, something that people want to speak on and Muslims want to speak on. Uh, it's a topic that can get all kinds of unwanted attention from law enforcement and from the authorities. Um, and we certainly don't want our ulama sitting in prison um, just for speaking on a subject uh, openly or freely. Um, however, you know, that doesn't mean that simply speaking about Mujahideen and Jihad in general terms uh, is going to land a person in prison. So I think there's, a, there's an opportunity there for ulama to uh, show courage uh, and to show um, a concern for the youth who uh, they're going to get their information about Mujahideen and Jihad from social media, from untrustworthy sources. Uh, it's better that they get it from uh, trustworthy sources. Um, and even if that information has to remain general, even if that information that they receive has to remain uh, strictly according to the texts and, and the ahkam, it's something at least. It's something. And I think that the youth are hungry just for somebody to talk about these issues uh, and not necessarily <laughs> direct them to this camp or to this place. Um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a middle way in there somewhere where instead of just being completely silent on it and just saying no, you know, there's no jihad, there's no this, and, and resembling uh, groups and characters that are also mentioned in the, in the Athar, um, you know, where they say there's no jihad, they said, well, that's the time when uh, it's most important, you know, uh, jihad. So uh, we have to maybe perhaps uh, figure out, and this is what I've been working on over the years, is, is how to kind of walk that fine line between talking about the subjects and staying out of prison. You know, uh, there's something to be said for that, uh, having, you know, understanding the law, the, the man-made, the secular law, uh, and where we can stay on this side of secular law and, and, and this side of the bars of prison, but still address some of the topics and uh, through the classical text that where we can't be labeled as this or that or supporting this or that group, uh, because we're, what we're saying is referring to the text, the classical text, the authorities, inshallah. Uh, the translation is the answer, all praises due to Allah. If they, meaning these Muslim fighters, were only attacking warring disbelievers, then indeed actions are according to intentions. The companions had said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man fights to be known for his bravery, bravery to defend his people and land, and seeking the praise and fame among people. Is any of that in the path of Allah? He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Whoever fights so that the word of Allah is elevated, that he is in the path of Allah. So if any one of them did not intend except to take wealth and spend it on acts of disobedience, then those are criminals deserving of the warning of Allah. 
And if their objective was that the word of Allah be elevated and the deen be for Allah, then those are mujahidun. However, they, when they have major sins, then they have good deeds from jihad and evil deeds. And as for the case when they are attacking Muslims who are there, then these are those who spread corruption in the land, warring against Allah and His Messenger, deserving of an exemplary punishment in the dunya and the akhirah, and Allah knows best. So, I really wanted to share this fatwa from <coughs> Shaykh al Sami ibn Taymiyyah, because I think he, he, he summarizes into three groups um, um, quite well and succinctly. People who fight, um, you know, you have uh, people who will fight uh, for reasons other than to expand and to spread the deen of, of Islam. And you have people who will fight for, um, to spread the deen of Islam uh, and the Sharia. Um, and then you'll have some of those people who fight to spread the deen of Islam and the Sharia where they have major sins, major sins. It doesn't stop them from being mujahidun, from being mujahideen. Right, and so what this, what we can, and then you have a third group that um, all they do is fight Muslims, fellow Muslims, uh, and they look for reasons to throw them out of Islam so they can fight them. Uh, and and it's very clear the the, the warning against such people that uh, they're deserving of an exemplary punishment, uh, and the punishment for for spreading fasad in the earth um, is uh, crucifixion. In fact, it's to have uh, the limbs cut on opposite sides, a hand and a foot, and then to, I believe the Hanafiya say that the person should be left uh, hanging uh, up like that for three days until they die of thirst or from their wounds. Uh, they should be left alive uh, when they're hung up there. So it's an exemplary punishment uh, in this life and in the next life. Um, this is a very serious warning uh, against people who make takfir of Muslims and then who set about uh, fighting and killing them uh, or to take their wealth or to uh, take their positions, their homes, their businesses. Um, so we have to be, as, as, as ulama and as teachers, we, we know this from the fiqh of jihad. We understand that you know, fighters, can they're not angels, they're not perfect people. Um, but there's a difference between making mistakes in strategy, um, making mistakes in, in military tactics, um, killing those who it's not permissible to be killed in the course of a general attack on a you know a legitimate general attack on a population, and uh, and 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 the importance of of, of jihad continuing as a far kifaya as an obligation um, versus those people who uh, are just looking to sow discord and chaos uh, and to uh, uh, disrupt the lives of both Muslims and non-Muslims and and who aren't following the Mawani of takfir, who aren't following the duwabit of takfir, who aren't following the fiqh of, of apostasy, who are ignorant about the fiqh of these matters and the fiqh of jihad. Uh, and they're committing more than just uh, uh, fasad in the earth in terms of the lives and wealth of the believers and the Muslims, um, but they're also altering the deen of Islam and altering um, the religion uh, in, in their ignorance of it. Uh, and so uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's an issue that a lot of communities around the world are dealing with. Um, and I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that a lot of these youth and a lot of these uh, men and women, um, they're still, I mean, at some point in time, they turn to uh, leaders and they turn to teachers and they turn to people for help, either through asking questions or, or making inquiries. and more than likely that wasn't provided them. Uh, and they turned to other people who misguided them, who gave them the wrong information, who steered them in the wrong direction. And so I think that there's always an opportunity um, to continue education, to start educating uh, uh, students in these matters and these affairs, uh, to do it in a way that stays on you know, this side of the law and on, on the right side of things in terms of uh, not putting in danger the freedom and the uh, security of, of our communities um, and, and possibly stemming uh, some of the tide of, of, of the misinformation that's reaching our youth, uh, that's leading them to make decisions that uh, not only hurt themselves but hurt the community as well. Um, but I can't put the blame entirely on them. You know, we, we have a responsibility to inform them and to educate uh, even and, and to show courage and bravery, especially on the, the, the elements and areas of Islam in which 
you know, the disbelievers don't like us talking about it. They, they, they pretty much take it, make every effort, take every step to prevent us and to scare us into not talking about it. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what I think uh, makes it all the more important.